Good afternoon, everybody. How are we today? Just waiting for my phone to pop up with a video so I can see that it's all going and who's coming on so I can say hello. Just coming up now, and then I can have a chatty with you then. There, there we are. Hi, Donna. How did I know you'd be the first? <laughs> Hi, Marina. Oh, they just wiggled it. You're all right, don't panic. It's not an earthquake, it's just me. <laughs> Say something so I know you're there, or not say it, type, type it hello, and then, hi Bev. So, this is what I'm going to do today. This is using um, stencils, inks, some stamps and a few other things as well. So I'm just going to move that light so it's off my board. Push it back a bit. It should be alright now, I think. Uh, there is a pin on the bottom of that thing as well. I again, I adore, I have Valerie. Right. So, I don't know if you all got the post and read the post and see the photos, but what you will need. Hi, Tracy. What do you need? That's right. So, what you will need is um, a sheet of white 300 gram and then um, two sheets of a stamping thickness card which is uh, 200 or 250 gram white. Hi Jay, hi Christine. Hi Yvonne. Right, so, so like I said, you need a sheet of 300 gram, which is for your base card. And then we need two sheets of a 250 or a 200 gram white for stamping and using our stencils on. Okay. And if you've got all that ready, if you can, if you're crafting along with me, if you can just say, yep, let's go. Hi, Alison. No problem. You're not late. You only, I've literally just started up. So I'm just saying you need a sheet of 300 A4 white and two sheets of about 250 to 200 gram white for the stamping. So, Hi Dania, hi Carolyn, hi Helen. So Helen's ready. Is everybody else ready that's going to join in today? All right, Donna's going to try and craft long. Yvonne is ready. So I think you should all be okay. Hi, your dad. So I'm going to make a start. So the first thing we need to do is I'm going to take these away, put them to the side. And the first thing we need is a sheet of 300 gram card. Marvellous. Yep, let's go now in a minute. Okie dokie Pete. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, 
And good mo good afternoon, Peter. Good afternoon, Gaina. Good afternoon, everybody. Right. Yep, well, the, any video you watch in our lives uh, are always going to go on YouTube, uh, on our Valleycraft YouTube, and you can always go back to our Facebook page and find the live and play it through there as well. So you'll always be able to get that anyway, okay? So, the A4, this is the 300 gram, so it's the, the thicker stuff for the base. Popping it all the way to the left on my board, and I'm going to score it at 15. And then you actually lift the score mark upwards. And that's how you end up with a nice, clean, crisp score line. And that was 15 centimetres. So I always work in centimetres for anybody who's new to, to me doing classes. And we're going to pop that to the side for because that's our base card. And then that is the end of your scoring. So you can then put your scoreboard away. If anybody's got any questions or anything, then please do ask. Hiya, Julie. Hiya, Deborah. Okay, so now I'm going to take, so this is a 250 gram piece of white, but you can use 200 as well. So it doesn't really matter. It's all sort of stamping card. It's our super smooth stuff. And anything that I'm using today, if we've got it in stock, it'll be on the link. And if it's not in stock, it probably will be due in stock soon. Especially the press to impress, where we've just been told that they're imminent into the country. So, next so, so next month. So, if anybody does want a press to impress, so I know there's a few that wanted one, then please do that. So, so everybody scored their first piece of card. Okay, I'm just gonna sort out James. It's gonna wobble a bit in a minute while Gavin's plugging the charger in. There we are. So I won't the camera won't actually run out of power anymore. Hiya Linda. Hi Linda Joyce. Hi Sue. Hi Tracy. Right. So so I've already scored one A3 piece of 300 gram card and I've scored it 15 centimetres. So the, the front is 15 and the back is just slightly smaller. Okay, so that's fine. It's a good card. So then I'm going to take a piece of white and this is 250 gram, but you can use 200 um, if you want. And the first cut I'm going to do is landscape in the cutter and I'm cutting it at 14 and a half centimetres. And this piece that's on the trimmer then you're going to turn and we're going to cut that to 20 and a half. So that's centimetres, I always work in centimetres myself. And then that is my piece that's going to be my first mat and layer. Okay, so that's the slightly bigger piece. So I'm going to place that inside the folded card and then put that to the side because we're going to deal with that later. But then the next piece that we had the dropped off this side, we're going to pop in so that it is portrait. So long ways top to bottom. And we're going to cut that to 14 centimetres. So that's 14 centimetres. Hi Adelia. Hi Pam. And then we're going to turn this around and we're going to, so that it's landscape, and we're going to cut it at 20 centimetres. So for those who come to my classes will know those sizes rather well. And we're actually going to be working on this piece first of all. Okay, so put that out of the way. So this is the piece we're going to be working on and we're going to be working on this with our stencils and with our inks. But before that, I want to show what I meant by blending tools. So there's numerous blending tools out there. You've got 
egg shaped blenders, which are called scoochies, no smoothies. And we do the small ones, I think, and the large ones, I think, I'm not sure. Uh, but they're on, I think the small ones are on the website and I think there's four, three or four in a pack. Okay, so ask them. We also do the little thimbly ones, which are fantastic. We've got the refills for one of these, but we haven't actually got the handles in at the moment. Because of everything that's going on, it's very hard to get stock in of some things at the moment, but I've got all my inks and stuff like that. So that's another one. And then you also got um, Clarity Distressing Brushes, which are very, very soft and very, very nice. And you could use them or a little soft scoop ice cream. No, I'm not using that. Is these oval blending brushes. Now, they look like they're a sponge, but they are actually brushes and they do separate out and they are so soft and you get a lovely blend with them and I've got a few of them so that's another thing so I'm going to be using my overly ones today but you can use any of those and then also we're going to be using some inks so you can use any inks at all so you can use teardrops which are the mementos and they could be the bigger mementos as well you can use the Water Reactive Harmonies, which I've got a few colours there. Mostly i got three different colour browns and then I've got a yellow, which is what I used on those. But I'm going to change my colours up today. I'm going to go with pinks, lilacs and, and purples. Then you've got the Opaque Pigment, which are ones that can be used on black card, dark card, any colour dark card. You can also use them on white cards and all sorts of cards, but they will show up on all colours, unlike your dye base ones. Hi, Mum. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Alison. So, so you could use those inks as well. And we've just had every single one of these colours in as well. So it's all 30, 37 colours. So I don't know if you saw the post, but you can use them. Or you can use your normal distress inks, okay? And I'm going to be using a combination of a, of a few different ones, to be honest with you. So, so it does just to show you that you can mix and match them, okay? So, first thing you need to choose is... So I'm going to concentrate on this one first. And then we might, I might show you then how to do this little back one later. And we see how we go, okay? So it'll be the same sizes and everything for everything. So, so we're going to go with this one and I'm going to just do this little band down the, the bottom there. Okay. So this is what we're going to do on there. Okay. And it doesn't matter now what stencil you actually use. Okay. You can use any stencil at all. So I'm actually going to use a diamond one and you can use diamond circles, you can use flower ones if you want, you know, you can use you can use any of these sorts of ones if you want. You can use the bottom bit there, you can use flower ones there, you can use brickwork, whatever you've got, that's what I wanted to use, okay? So, so, so that's what I'm going to do. So what I think I might do is move my mat over a little bit like that. I'll leave that towards the end of the mat so you can just see it and then I can work on this bit here. Okay, oops, sorry, that was my chair. Okay, and then we also need a little bit of low tack tape, washi tape or stuff like that. Now, the one on the roll that we do, you get three in a pack and that's the Crafter's Companion low tack. They are a little bit more tacky than some low tacks and washi tapes, but they work really well. And I just defluff these onto my top. So I just dab it on my top or stuff like that and undo that. Okay. But then that's the one we can get. And then there's also the Scott removal, which isn't very good on parchment, I find. 
the Crafters Companion one is much better on parchment, which is what I use it for. But I'm going to use the Crafters Companion one now just to show that you can use it. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull a little piece off. Okay. And I'm just going to place it on the edge of my stencil there so that it's holding it. Because it's not actually on the card, I'm not actually defluffing this at the moment. This is literally just to hold my stencil in place. So that's why I haven't defluffed this. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take... So again, you can use your tape. And I'm just defluffing this on my top. So I'll bring my top in just to show you. I'm just tapping onto the material, rubbing it in. And what this will do, it'll just remove any sort of thing. You can put it on your sleeve, you know, whatever you want to do like that. Okay. The more fibrous it is, the better. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to go through one of those triangles there. And go across like that. And I'm going to go again along the bottom. So I'm literally just leaving sort of one, two, two of the big ones there and I'm going to have a little one, that big one here. So I'm doing sort of that there. So get the deep fluff. Now if you've got, um, I'll show you another way of doing this as well. I'll leave that bit of tape there. If you have post-it notes, hi Peter. You could even place the sticky side of the post-it note along the edge as well with your stencil and you can do that as well okay so that is that but with post-it notes obviously if it gets too saturated it could go underneath the, the thing so that's why i tend to use tape more than anything okay but i'll leave that like that so you can see there's a difference so i've just left a bit at the bottom and i've separated at the top and you can put a bit of scrap paper there just to hide any of that if you're a bit wary of doing your brushes across it or stuff like that. Could you tell us what piece of card you're using again, the smaller piece or the larger? Um, so the first piece was the folded piece, which I put to the back. And then the first piece I have cut was the 14 and a half by 20 and a half and that is inside the folded card and then the other piece that was 14 by 20 is the piece I'm using for this okay so literally I've just got a band there now that I'm going to use with my inks okay so like I said I'm going to change my colors up today so I'm not going to use sort of the browns and the yellows I'm going to use some pinks and and purples okay so I'm going to use fuchsia, pink tulip, Ooh. I've got crushed velvet there but in my drawer upstairs there's a damson one I think. It's in the top drawer underneath some of these shaped ones Gav. Alright so Gam's going to get the other colour so literally I'm using I'm going to use pink tulip, fuchsia, and so you can see there's slightly different, there's pinks, pink, and then I was going to use maybe the crushed velvet, but I may not on that one. I might use the one that Gavin's getting now. And then I'm going to take my brush, and this is a nice little soft brush, and you can use your big brushes as well, so that's not a problem. Yeah, so, and that then is Damson Wine. So I think that's a good little combination. So to start off with, I'm using one tool because I can wash these after, because I'm going from light to dark, it's not a problem. So first of all, pick up some color and rub that into your mat first. So this is why you need a non-stick mat, a non-stick sheet or a glass mat. So you can put that on there. And then I wanted to just go Nice and lightly, nice circular motions. It doesn't look like it's putting much on there, but trust me, it is. Okay, I can see the color here. 
and I'm just putting a coat of ink down so you can actually use any colors at all so it's the lighter color of whatever colors you're using okay so I know there's like this color on that I can see that okay so that's my light one now I'm not going to clean that light off there because what I'm going to do now is go with my light one here my brush go into my medium color and I'm going to actually mix those colors together there okay and I'm just going to go on the one edge so this might be a little bit of light for you to see but I'm just going to go along one edge there take my brush if I want a bit more color I just go there so let's go along there I'm going to keep these light down here I change this up a bit because I can so this is the light color that I first done and then this bit is the darker color so I'm now blending them together and then I'm going to take my darker color which I'm just going to swipe lightly and you can see that color on my mat there I'm just going to move that out and around a bit and this will make sure that it doesn't go down in a big blob on, on my mat and then I'm just going to come over sort of this the last third of this area here okay and then I can just lightly swoop my brush so it just catches the end of the medium color there okay and then I'm gonna leave that as that okay but then when I remove so it's up to you how dark or how light you want to go with that the choice is yours so I'm just gonna take off my post-its and you can see now there's a line there where the ink was because you can see the dark it going down there but not the light and then I'm going to take my low tack tape off but I'm keeping the tape really low so even though I've defluffed it I'm keeping it really low to the card and I'm just bringing it back slowly and really flat to the card and the stencil and then I know that is done and then on my side pieces here because it's not actually stuck to the card I can just take that off anyhow okay and then when I lift that you can see I've got some little dotties okay the stamp with fabulous on is it in shop it is on our website dawn it's one of Phil Martin's life quotes so it's sentimentally yours life quotes and you will find it on the link I think there's a link at the bottom of the Facebook that you're watching at the moment so I don't know if the website is up and running at the moment because I think the web suppliers are actually having problems can getting us connected and stuff and putting us on so there's a little bit of ink there so I can clean that off but I don't want to clean it off yet because what I want to do is take that same sort of tape that I've just removed off the stencil or the post-it notes whichever you prefer I want to place that along the edge of the line there and it doesn't matter as long as it's website still not up no so you may have problems with the website at the moment but if there is anything you want uh, maybe make a note of it on a piece of paper with a pen and then go, go on later hopefully it'll be up and running a bit later don't know why they're having problems so now I've covered up that area I want to take up my ink from there again and I want to go around the edge so I'm just brushing in from the edge and you can use any tool for this so you could even go across that way and then pick up some more color go across that way so I'm just going across the edges just to make that take away the whiteness a bit hi Linda okay so I'm just going to do that and I'm also going to go just along the edge so you can bring it in there so if you're using a, a thimble or something just lightly put your color down on there and then just flick it through so it's only caught in the very edges 
up some more ink. So notice I haven't added any more ink from the actual ink pads because I only want it to sort of just take the edge off the white on those sides there. So I'm just wiping that off down there. Da, 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 da. There we are, and I think that's enough. So when I lift that then, you can see that there is a band, a light band of colour. I think I'm in shot. Yep. So you can actually see there's a light band of colour. Okay. So that's what I wanted to do. Okay. And then once I've done that, I then I need to move that to the side, take my spritzer bottle and, and wipe that away. So use a bit of kitchen towel or blue towel or got any old ankies or stuff like that. But you need to make sure that this is nice and dry now because you don't want, if this is our oh, super smooth card, you don't want the water to penetrate the card. I would have used a tea towel, but the tea towel I use, the ones I use to wash my, clean my stamps, isn't absorbent enough to take any of the water up. So that's why I'm using kitchen towel today. Okay, because I need this to be dry. If I use my tea towel, it would still be a residue of wetness on the mat. Okay. And while I was there, there's ink on my stencil, so I can actually take that off that with the same bit of tissue I've just used. Okay, just make sure you just wipe both sides of the stencil because your ink will be there. Okay. And then what we need to do, so you can see my band's a little bit thinner this time, doesn't matter. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my fine line black pen, and this can be any thickness, and you need a bevel edge ruler. So the bevel edge ruler will, it's actually got a little edge that comes like that, and we're going to be using that upside down. So that when you put your the flat end of the ruler down, the edge of that ruler isn't actually touching the paper. Okay. So, is everybody okay with that? Just going to lean in, you'll get my shoulder, maybe a year. And then I'm going to take micron pens. So your micron, and then you've got the old uh, letter set ones. So it doesn't matter which ones you're using, as long as it's a fine line black pen and they could be 03, 05, 01, note, note 5, it depends on what you've got there, it doesn't matter. Okay, hi Diane. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to make sure it's working, so just scribble on a bit of paper. I'm actually going to line it so I can just see the, the tiny bit of the, the ink in. And I've actually used in a 0.5, so that's the thickest one we do, I think, as well. I'm just going to place a line like that. And that's going right along the edge of that inked area that I just did. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make a little sort of border as well. So I'll show you this. And this can be up to a centimetre or, or more. So you can see then that, that is like that. Okay. So if your line has come out right, just put it back on. Because sometimes your pen will play up a bit. Don't worry, just go back in. Slow the pen going down, just because I went too quick the first time. Allow the ink to flow. And then you get a perfect line. Okay. So instead of actually trying to do the two lines this way, I'm actually going to turn it around, put my bevel edge back on that end, because then I can line it perfectly. So I've got just that little bit sticking out the edge of that stamp. And I'm going to place another line. So I'm just slowing it all the way down. Okay, so that's the other line, and I'm going to make the same sort of thickness 
it's at the bottom. And it doesn't matter, it can be thinner, thicker, it's entirely up to you. This is your design now. Okay. And keep in mind thin because I know what I've got to do next. Hi Helen, hi Diane, and I think Bev is in as well. I think Bev popped up earlier as well. So I've now got two lines like that. Okay, so two above, two below. And that sort of makes a band. So it really, really does separate it out from, from this. So then we go into Concentrate on these little bits here. So when you look at it like that, it looks like it's you've got a dark area, then it goes into light, then it comes back into dark light, dark light, dark light, dark light. And this is all a series of lines. Okay, so you take your fine line pen again. And you just start... You come out wider, further apart. So they start off close, then it comes further apart, and then you can start bringing them in closer. And then you come in closer, 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 until they almost touch in. And you do about five lines of that, and then you start making them a little bit further apart. And then bring them in closer again. And you can see then that you get in the light and the darkness. So separate them out. You can make them as big or as small as you want. And then start bringing them in closer together again. So you can see then that that's what we're doing. Okay, and we're just going to continue along those two lines like that. Come in closer. And then further apart. An older card so you're comfortable doing this. And don't be afraid if you, if you think, oh well, I could have done a bit more there. Just come back in, bring them closer if you want a bit darker, and then you get a darker area. Okay? Separate them out. There we are. So that's my first line. And then because I like going like that and I don't want my hand touching this, I'm going to turn this around now and I'm going to do the same on this side. Okay, and they don't have to match top and bottom. They can be completely opposite each other. So I'm going to actually going to do that. So it's, it's a bit like a barcode, but you're producing that barcode yourself. So I'm going to be really close on the end here. And then I'm going to come out further. And then I'm going to come in closer. And then out further. And then closer. Out further. In closer. And then out further. And then I'm just going to come in really close at the end there. There we are. So now I've got that little band there. So everybody happy? Or are you thinking, oh, why did I start? <laughs> so I've got my diamonds going that way. Lovely. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take so if you've got circles, that's all I wanted to do is 
with half of the circle now from the one side or where you've got flowers or whatever I'll show you what you do with flowers so if you've got stencils with flowers then say that's your flowers that have been inked and that's what you got as a flower what I wanted to do then is literally I wanted to just so you've inked that flower I wanted to come along here I wanted to cause a shadow with a pen so I'm just doing this so people can see what I want them to do if they've got flowers within there so pick this one edge so I wanted to shadow around the flowers like that if it hasn't got a center to it place a center in there and also make that so it's darker on that side as well okay and then with the dot in I want it to just dot on the same end you've done the, the darkness just wanted to bring some dots really close to each other at the one end of the petal there I will show you that now while it's on the ink pad in front of me so with the darknesses I wanted to put dots closer to each other and then I wanted to come out and then just come out to sort of less dots so you sort of get that gradation okay and you just do that then with all the petals okay so that's that but with my diamonds I'm actually going to put the shadows on this end so I'm going right up to the point and then fl just flick in out like that so I've literally just done that so ink our side just flick a little bit at that and then again because I've got my ink here I'm just going to do lots of tiny little dots there right. so you're actually going to do lots of dots to make it darker and then as you're coming out then so you will get lines if you don't lift the pen every time and then as I'm doing this then and as I'm coming out then I'm going randomly not in just lines I'm just going to come out and I'm just going to just a couple of dots at the end and that's how you get your shadow okay so that's how you get your shadow on the one side of that and it'll always look different depending on what thing so basically that's the way I'm doing it on my one today okay and then that's all I've done then so I'm going to do that on every diamond and I'm going to take the, the edge of the diamond I'm just going to add a little circle on the end I'm just going to flick out and make it a furry a furry end like that and then in between the two diamonds here so where they come in like up there I'm just going to put a dot and I'm going to make a square dot like that so if you've got the same stencil then you can do that but if you haven't, then obviously you can have a look at what you shapes you have got and work out what to do with that. Okay. So obviously that is something that we can do. Go right up to the last diamond there. So any questions, anybody? Glad you like our website, Diane. Or Facebook or whatever. Oh man, I got a couple of little tiny diamonds there. Let's go in there. Okay. So that's actually the outer edge of my diamonds done. And then like I said, where they meet in between of that, I'm gonna do dots make a square
very quiet again today. Are you all shouting at the screen at me now? Okay, so I'll do that and literally just lots of dots at the bottom. We go really, really lots of dots at the bottom right there. So we're literally just making it a lot thicker at the one end. So it looks almost black. And then it's just coming out. Is everybody happy where they are where they've got to now? Is everybody We're all busy doing their penny bits. Okay. Probably all still doing their lines and their borders. We're going to be using the very same stencil again now, whichever one you've used. And these could be the fine line pens that you've, uh, that some of you I know have bought for parchment, the water based ones, you can do that. Um, the only time you wouldn't be able to use that is if you was going to colour over the top of them. These fine line pens, the letter set ones and the the pick micron ones, they're actually waterproof once they, they're down and dry. So they are permanent. But it will spread out with your alcohol pens. It's that type of ink. But you can use your water-based ones that you said some of you might have for parchment or groovy. Okay, so that is that, and now I've just got to do my fuzzy bits. So by using your fine line pen as well, it's given you a chance to sort of relax and just chill out a bit and just do a little bit of doodling basically which brings me to something I've been watching recently um, and that is that Barbara Gray has been doing um, a doodle session um, every morning on I think it's the Clarity Facebook but you can actually go to Clarity um, YouTube go to Clarity YouTube and they're all on there and I think she's up on number 15 or 16 now so but literally follow through from the first one and the the things that Barbara has shown you what to do with just a micron pen and a pencil is, is, is quite phenomenal really. I mean, you know, for me to say that, is, you know, it's a compliment. So, and I know a lot of people would look at what she's going to show you and go, Oh, no, I can't do that, that's scary. But trust me, the way she shows is very, um, it's very good. And it's easy to learn as well. Okay, so now I've got my little border like that. So how is everybody else going? Have you, have you got to that stage? Were you ready for the next bit? Yeah. 
Anybody? <laughs> Anybody there? It's like a seance. Is there anybody there? <laughs> They're all concentrating, that's why. They're all concentrating, Gav. Concentrating. <laughs> Kena's there. <laughs> Hi, Kena. So what were you doing? <laughs> have you have you kept up or Lovely. So what I'm gonna do now so I don't know if you we can <laughs> Peter's not <laughs> Well you're not you or you you're ready. Or you're definitely here because you've just said you're not. I'm not finished with that bit but I'm happy to progress and finish that later. Right, okie doke. That's it, we can always play it back and proceed to the next bit because you can still get to that while the card is finished. So if you're happy to move on everyone, consta trashing. <laughs> consta trashing much or just a little? Be glad when we get back to the shop and do the proper classes. I'm really missing, really missing all my my regulars and seeing everybody and missing my hugs off people and missing having a laugh with everyone because I can't hear all your jokes from this side of the screen. So. What I'm going to do now, I place my stencil so that the edge of it, of the pattern, is just on the outer side of that line there. <laughs> loads and loads and loads of concentration. Okay. And then I'm going to leave that there and then I'm actually going to put that over there so I don't get any ink on that area. So I'm just covering what I've done at the bottom there. I'm going to take my brush again, so this could be the bigger brushes, and in fact I'll show you it can be bigger brushes, smaller brushes, and that by using a different product to do that now. So what I'll do, I'll take a Barber Grey brush this time, just to show that different bristles, different brush and things like that, and I'm going to take my light colour. So I don't want you to go with the dark colour on this one, I want to go with the light colour then. Okay? And literally go across the ink pad until it's picked up some colour. And with this we're only doing one colour. So I'm literally just going back and forth on the stencil, making sure that it's going into my little diamonds on my stencil. Now if you're concerned if your stencil isn't big enough you could even cover the other end as well and you can cover that with a bit of scrap paper and a bit of tape just along the edge so that it doesn't lift. Okay because we are going to be coming up to that top bit in a bit but I'm just going to reload again and if you hold it down the bottom of the brush there and hold those bristles it'll become darker, so you'll get more coverage. If I hold it up at the handle here, it'll go a lot softer, so it'll depend on how light your lightest color is. But mine is really, really light, so I'm gonna hold it at the bottom. I'm gonna go across there. So some of you may have the double-ended brushes, which I know the bristles are a little bit harder on them. And that's fine, that's not a problem. If you've used, because if you've got them, you've obviously used them enough yourself. So you know what to do with them. Just hold them in the middle of the two brush your heads and, and carry on like that. So that is that little area done. Oh, 
gonna lift that stern so and you can see then that I've got my diamonds in the different going the different way okay and then I'm going to to finish off up here I'm actually going to line up because there are half diamonds there so I can either go with a half or I can line up quite a few of the diamonds within the pattern there and then I can tape that back down just to finish that top bit there okay and again I'll just bring that to the end there because I haven't got to worry just so I can put my fingers on there I'm gonna go again ink up I'm just gonna finish that a little bit there so now I'm finishing the half half ones that was up the from the edge of the stencil and right off the edge of the page and that is that one done so then the background is all there so I hope you can see that okay and then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to place that stencil with the big diamond as it is there so that the diamonds are going the opposite way to where they were on that one and I think I'm keeping Gavin up yawning like anything but yeah must be relaxing see my classes are always relaxing <laughs> and then I'm just gonna finish that off by doing those diamonds at the bottom there so you just bring in some of the pattern that you've got in our band into that area there okay and that's what we got so I've got the bigger diamonds down here on the whiter area and then I've got the bigger diamonds on this side from the band okay and that's all we're gonna do with that is that okay and then I'm gonna pop that then to the side so we literally just fill in the area above and below the band with the stencil and the lighter coloring so I'll, I'll leave up there for a minute while I'm cleaning my stencil so I'm gonna take my tape off there and because that tape is full of ink now I'm gonna just roll that up so that I don't get it everywhere so I don't want fingerprints okay take my put my lid on my ink as well so that I don't get any water in that when I spritz it and I'm just gonna put that there so there's a way of using the ink that's on your stencil as well um, once you've finished with it obviously there's gonna be lots of ink on there and if you just lightly spritz it like that first I'm gonna take a little scrap of a bit of card here so all I'm gonna do is push it down on it and the stencil moved with it so that's fine and then when you lift that off like that you end up with a nice sort of light background of the opposite way of the stencil but remember I said um, always say about I was super smooth and as a water card which side do we have to pop it hmm? all right <laughs> okay so this is not water card and because I've spritzed that and put it on there it the fibers of the card this is how super smooth it's actually absorbed it and it's actually caused the card to bubble which sometimes is quite nice because it gives it a nice little bit of texture but if you don't want it to do that then you can use your normal linen card or something that's like our pick a mix card it's quite more porous so so that's lovely or just not your normal copy paper from your printer that would be lovely as well okay but you can really really pick up that little bit of pattern okay but as I was doing I'm gonna finish that and that's that's the difference really between cards 
is watercolour card you can saturate quite a bit you can saturate it quite a bit with water uh, which is why it's called water card whereas the super smooth um, there are a couple of couple of super smooth ones out on the market that you can use water on but to be honest I'd rather have watercolour card for my water and the super smooth for my alcohol pens or my dye based inks and stuff like that so I've now finished with that stencil and I'm going to pop that to the back so that is that one I'm going to pop my brush back away in there okay because I'm going to show you how to use a different type of blending tool as well so I'll finish that for now okay so what I'm going to do now I'm going to show you how to use the um, eggs the smoothies so that is that piece and that is <laughs> I get that now Peter literally just clicked <laughs> which side do I pop it off to just clicked <laughs> Gavin said he was teasing <laughs> and it was a joke but I didn't get it so so that is that completed okay and that is my base card so i'm going to pop that still to the side but the piece that was inside there now i'm going to bring onto my mat okay and again you can still use your, your normal brushes that you've just used if you've used brushes you can use the finger daubers you can use the distressing tools you know the wooden handle ones you can use um smoothies which is what I'm going to use now okay so don't be afraid of what tools you're going to use okay so so that's that piece so I'm going to pop that with the folded piece of card because that's all we need to do on that so is everybody okay okay so so this is the slightly bigger piece now, which was 14 and a half by 20 and a half. And because we've used the colors within that, we want the colors to match the edge of this. So this, if you're ever using color inks and you haven't got a color card that you can mat and layer with, then this is what you do. You take your piece and there's a, a smoothie and I'm just gonna pick up some color on the smoothie okay so this is now the color piece that's around the outer edge okay marvelous so we take a smoothie and literally we're just gonna color the very edge and I'm literally just coming in off the edge of the over there, off the edge of the mat. So the other thing you could use for this as well is, um, which you could have used on that, would have been your Mica Magics. And then you'll actually get um, a nice um, metallic sort of mica sort of sheen so you could use them as well and you can actually use your finger daubers with them as well so you can still do that in that sort of way and so all i'm doing is just adding a bit of color and it's just being careful because the card is slightly thinner that you're not going to crease it and buckle it so i'm just using different tools just to show you that you can use any tools really as long as you're happy with what you've got at home so it doesn't matter what you use because everybody will be different everybody will like different things and we're literally just caught in the end the edge of the card but these i do really really like these uh, opaque harmony ink pads 
like I said, the difference between them, these and your normal dye-based ones, is the dye-based ones you would not see on a black piece of card, whereas you would these ones. Because your dye-based ones would absorb into the card and you would lose the ink because it is dye-based, so water-based. But these ones are pigment-based, so they actually will sit on the surface of the card. So that is now my piece of background like that. And that's showing you that you can use your smoothies as well. Okay. And the other thing is pigment ink will actually stay wet for longer. So if I wanted to now, I could get clear embossing powder or a little bit of gold embossing powder, put it around the edge of that, just sprinkle it on and heat that around as well, because it will actually take to it nice and easy. Because that's the benefits of pigment. So you can actually do stamp something with this ink, with the opaque ones, in um, on black card, and then use a clear embossing powder over the top of it, and then it would be a glossy colour like that of on black. Okay, so so that's that cleaned up. Now we're going to take this piece, our other piece, and our folded card, and we're going to take our adhesive. So this could be um, your Kalal All Purpose, which I do like, and I do use a lot of this. You can use your normal wet glues, um, you can use your double sided tapes, you know, it is down to you really. Again, every person likes their own way of fixing. And I gotta thank Yvonne for telling us about this all purpose collab years ago. We didn't know how good it was until we bought it and she asked us. So that is now on the front of my card, which is the bigger half of the card. And that's that. And the good thing with the collateral purpose is it gives you a bit of wiggle room. So you can actually slide it around, lift, re-lift it, put it back down until that glue is hard and gone off. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to fit that onto there. So you can see now that those colours match lovely. Okay. Again, I can still slide it around if I need to. There. Okay, so that is now my colour. So you can see using the same stencil and it looks completely different. Okay. So now I'm going to do this little topper. So that's where we've got to at the moment. Okay. So for the topper, this is why I said we needed a second piece of um, 200 or 250 gram. I mean, you can use 300 gram, you know, but you, you used whatever you have to hand really. Okay, so I'm going to move that one out of the way. I'm going to put that on the top. And then this is my piece of card. And I'm actually going to use lift them up. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Ow! Ow! I pinched. These magnets can be vicious things. <laughs> really, really vicious. So the, the stamp I'm going to use for my topper now is going to be this one. It's sentimentally yours and it's Life Quartz and this one is fabulous. So it says, be your own kind of fabulous and just let yourself sparkle. So what I want, as per my old card, 
I'm just going to use the top half so be your own kind of fabulous so I don't want the bottom bit okay so this is just to show you what to do if you only want half of your stamp so there's the stamp let's see remove it from his carrier I'm going to place it where I want it, leaving a little bit of room so I know I can put my little border around that as well. Okay, place those magnets in a bit more. I'm going to lift that up. And then this time I used black on this one. But because I that was more darks anyway, and this is more pink, so I'm actually going to use um, the Damson, no, Damson, I don't know. Um, might use the crushed velvet to stamp that one on there. All right. So again, you can use these opaque stamps for stamping. And that's all I'm going to do is, so let's get you into shot and on there. So I'm going to, I'm just lightly tap. And I'm just coming over the edge of what I want. So these work a little bit like the oxides. The distress oxides, if anybody's asking. If you know, doesn't matter, I told you. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do, I've got a clean bit of post-it note. That's all I'm going to do now is just I've inked up my stamp. I'm just going to put the post-it note over the other part of the stamp that I didn't want it to come out. I'm literally going to bring it over. And I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure on this. So this is the press to impress if Pam's still around. And that's that. And the good thing about all this is, is if I want to add a little bit more colour, I can go back in. Remember, I'd have to lift that off first. Tap a little bit more ink on there. Place that back over the area that I don't want. Because the post-it note is just sticky enough. That's fine, okay. Oh, and I've just hit the camera with my head. <laughs> it's lucky, no sense, no feeling. There we are, so I've actually done that now. So I can then remove that and you can see that, that would have been all the ink that would have gone on the bottom of there if I hadn't put that over there. So that's a good use of a post-it note. And then obviously I've got me stamp cleaner, which is my st stamp cleaning tool. So what I'm going to do is take off this. So there's a couple of ways of doing it. Let me show you. If any of you have got this, I know, I know. If any of you have got this, if you push the lid down like that and then lift it up, it takes out the bottom pad, okay, which is your scrubbing pad, okay. And then if you put that to the side and just spit your stamp, you can then take your pad and rub it over the top, okay. And then all the ink is on there and then you can place that back into there and then you can lift out your stamp knowing that it's clean and you can rub it onto the other side so that gets right into the stamp then and cleans it up and sort of dries it at the same time okay so that is that so you can see then that, that is nice and clean no purple ink on it at all it's nice and clean okay my lovely assistant is going to put that away for me okay I'm gonna put my press to impress away now as well so if Pam is on this is the press to impress and it is gonna be coming back in next month into this warehouse and into our store as well so if anybody does want them, please let us know. Just message us on the post at the bottom. I'm 
no problem, Alison. Just keep watching, and you know we can. You can always catch up. That's the good thing about these because they're being recorded, um, and they will be on our YouTube. And you can just click this later. You can go back on it. So now I've stamped this. I want to make sure that I've got sort of the same distance around. So that's one and a half centimeters from the top there. It's one and a half at the side because I balanced that out right. So I want that to be one and a half there. So if I measure from there to the end of the ink, that's ten and a half. So I need to add one and a half centimeters on top of that. So that would be twelve. So my topper needs to be twelve by so it's nine there so that's ten and a half so it'll be twelve by ten and a half so literally I want one and a half centimeters all the way around that sentiment okay so literally the sentiment is more eight and a no it's not it's nine centimeters so one and a half centimeters either side is ten and a half centimeters so that's so all I do is put that to ten and a half. No. One and a half centimetres either side. Either side, so ten and a half, so that'll be twelve. Did you want to see it? See, Gavin, the maths just doesn't go well together at all. Either side. That's one and a half. Either side. <laughs> oh, to be back in work, to be back in work. So that's nine, so that needs to be ten and a half. So as long as you leave him one and a half centimetre all the way around, and then we know then that's gonna be a good little guideline for us. No, you don't take that. There we are. So now that is central. Could you just to everything? Go one and a half centimetres. No, because the ink would have to be from there. No, because it's harder to balance it outside. And I think to hold on to and that gives in the way when you're holding it. Yeah, if you put it in like that and went one and a half centimetres. Then it would cut on the Oh, then it would the cut on there, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which is why you've got to work out. Just ignore me. So, Gavin's trying to be clever. <laughs> no, I just thought there might be an easier way of doing it. Cause I no, it's not. But if you measure your sentiment, and then once you've measured your sentiment, just add, because we want one and a half either side, or all the way around, just add three to the size of your sentiment. Three centimeters and cut that. Okay? So, is anybody else lost now? <laughs> okay, so I've now got that. So, the one thing I would suggest is taking a bit of that paper that you had left, now that, okay, and your ruler, and your fine line pen again, because you don't really want to use, get that pen on this mat because it's permanent, okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my pen, and I'm just going to do a band, Again, so we're going to go around the edge. So that's a line there. So I'll show you on my mat because I can wash that off anyway. I'm, I'm not really worried. If you've got one of these special blending mats, they do say not to get alcohol on it. So if we just stop right on the edge. So literally I'm just going around all four sides with a little strip. If anybody can hear the music in the background, you probably feel like you're in Valleycroft anyway. It's the same music. Okay. So that's that, and you can make it a little bit wider if you want to. Okay. But that's that. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a black ink pad I'm just going to rub that along the edge. Unless you're taking the black ink pad along the edge. If you, you can take a sharpie along the edge of it if you wanted to, or an alcohol pen, 
plus all I'm doing now is just adding a little bit of black to the outer edge so that when it goes on a bit of white card it'll actually show okay a little bit more there all right okay so that's that and that was just um, a waterproof dye but you can use any dye based one you can use any of them really so again on this border all the way around then i want you to do exactly what we've done on there so light dark further away closer and stuff like that and that's what i wanted to do okay so in the corners I just did a line up in the corner and then came out a little bit of like that just to make like a little box in the corner of like that and like I said you can make this border as wide as you want so it could be wider than that oh, up and again. ah there we are our website is up and running again okay, I was just checked and it's up and running so obviously our suppliers have actually sorted it out So there we are, I'm just going to go tighter, 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 tighter. Looser, looser, looser. Loosey, loosey, tighty, tighty. Loosey, loosey. Tighty, tighty. Loosey, loosey. Tighty, tighty. Loosey again. So you're literally just doing your barcode thing then along all four edges. Okay. And it's not so bad when you're doing this one because you can come off the edge of the page so I'm going to stop in between two lines so wider closer wider closer wider closer wider closer Gold. <laughs> Gold. Gold. <laughs> is is Yvonne still on? <laughs> I think that gold was for you, Yvonne. You know, gold. <laughs> is that right, Peter? was for Yvonne wasn't it <laughs> after the last time in was in groovy or card glass I think it was groovy wasn't it because Karen wasn't it hi late how are you Kez did you enjoy your cycle ride yesterday up on the mountain On your lonesome, you could have dragged Gavin out. <laughs> Although he hated that little ride the last time we did it, as it killed him. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are. So I've done my barcode thing around the edge now. Okay, and then. That then basically will be brought in. I'm just going to give this map a little bit of a wipe. And then you can put foam pads on the back of that and place it there. I'm not biting, my lines are all to pot. Doesn't matter Yvonne, it's unique. It's all unique, it's all about doodling and peace of mind and just doing what you want to do with it and stuff like that. 
So yeah, so perform pads on that bit and place it on there, which my lovely assistant will pop upstairs and get for me <laughs> as he sneezes. <laughs> so is everybody happy with that? I quite like that. So of course this was the my original and I just made my my matting layer bigger on this one because uh, my piece of card was smaller it was bigger anyway so because I didn't check it before I did it I was just working on design so that's why that one's like that and then what I'll do then I'll show you how to do the background on the other card with the other stencil but everything else then was sort of done the same way but it is a nice way of using some stamps with your stencils. So that's all I'm doing, just putting some foam pads there. Thank you, Jill. If you're always wary, if you're wary about putting these down with foam pads, you can always put a little bit of wet glue or print stick on the back of your foam pads before you place it down. And that'll give you a little bit of wiggle room. And then when that wet glue dries, you're absolutely fine then. So it does give you a little bit more extra securing us on getting that right so literally that's that bit I am almost done I have loved crafting long and we'll have to look for more stencils <laughs> okay so that's that one but what I'm gonna do now is just show you how I did this background as well okay so this was a brick wall but I will actually show you that one now because this is actually using other stamps as well Okay. Hmm. There we are, so I'll leave that both sides there. So you can see that one there. I'll center my mat a bit more to the camera. I'll leave that one that side, I'll leave that one that side, and I'll put that one but there. Not over but there, but but there. Okay, so again, I'm going to show you now this background so you can continue doing yours now while I'm showing you how to do the other background or if you wanted to grab another little piece, which is 14 by 20, same size as the other mat and layer that we did. Okay, all right, and then I'm going to take my brick wall stencil and I'm actually going to use a bit of tape oh no, I'll use a bit more tape here going to use two little pieces of tape so if you do find that your low tack tape can be a little bit sticky just roll it sticky to sticky so that the sticky is outside on both put one to the back at the top on your piece of paper and then you won't have to worry about if it does rip it it's only going to rip the back piece of your card like that and you can stick that down and then your stencil it doesn't matter if you if you're so I'm going to bring that brickwork it doesn't matter if your stencil is on a sticky piece because it'll hold it um, I don't think it matters. Might use the um, might use the thim thimble ones actually, just to show that the difference. Okay, 
So because in the in the thing of it all, I'm actually going to use. Um, so you can still see the two cards now that I've done before, but I'm actually going to work on this stencil over here now. Okay. So I'm at, if you look at the brickwork in this, starts off yellow, then it goes into a paler brown, then it goes into a slightly medium brown, and then it goes into a slightly darker brown. So it all blends down into each other. Okay, thank you, Pam. Um, so what I'm gonna do with these ones, I think I will start with yellow. Then I will go into orange and then I will go into red. And again, I'm mixing the inks up so it's not a problem. Okay, so I'm going to use my thimbly ones now. Okay, so inks, when you ink these up, always onto your mat again. So take some ink, put it on your mat and then, and then go to your stencil. And literally just go in nice and light on the stencil and just filling in some bricks and because I'm going to use three colors I'm actually going to go just over a quarter of the way so if it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so there's eleven so I'm going to go four bricks down with a yellow I'm just literally just using the thimbles And I know this is away from the top, I'm going to add half bricks up there as well, like I have done the bottom, yeah? Once I finish, and that's why I'm, it's good to do that, because you can blend your yellows. You can do your yellow like that, so that's the yellow. Okay. Then I'm going to go into the orange. Okay. So just so you know, any of these memento ink pads that are on our website um, the supplier we get them from are discontinuing them so if you want any of these mementos because you've been building them up or stuff like that and you haven't got some of the colors that we've got in work then please do get hold of them because we won't be able to get them because they are discontinuing them but they will be replaced with the is inks which is what uh, John next door uses um, and that they will be coming from the same company that we use for our press to impress and we're going to be getting the new big nesting dies so if anybody's been waiting for the big nesting dies to come in they've bringing out those as well because we've been waiting a good few months for those so so I know Dawn if Dawn's still on I know you was looking at getting some of the big was it the big circles or the big squares I think it's the squares I think well they now do the massive set which I think I've got about 20 odd dies in and then they've also got um, which is the plain and then they've also got another set of squares now which have got a stitched edge so it stitches both ends of the die so if you're cutting out it'll still be on there and if you're leaving it in it'll be on that bit as well so i'm doing i'm just gonna go with my orange here where my yellow is i'm actually actually going over so it's actually blending in with that yellow a bit into that half a brick just doing that I'm just being careful. The stencil's not moving, my paper's not moving, but it depends on how fine your stencil is to how much it'll move around. I'm just putting my finger on the center there. And we do cut a lot of our own stencils as well. We design our own and stuff like that. So um, if there's any you think that might be nice in the shop, please, you know, do ask because if we think it's worth doing a load, then we'll, we'll do a load, you know, that's how we build our stocks up. I'm just 
just going to go over the yellow one just so that blends into that there. There we are. So that's my yellow and my orange blending to each other. Okay, so now I can put my yellow one away and I can put that there. But I'll keep my orange one out now so that I can blend that into the red in a bit. Okay. So I'm now going to move this up a bit so you can see the bottom. Because obviously I've stuck my paper down. So you can see I put dab a lot of ink up there and then I swish it around on my pad. And then I'm going to go into the bottom there. So this is the red. So the red will always be... Red is always a colour that's quite vibrant and will take really, really quickly. It's yellows and oranges that can be a bit of a pain sometimes. They don't quite blend in as much as you want it to. Okay, and I'm going over half the brick that's above that's got the orange. So it looks like it's part and parcel of the, of the same thing. Now you can do this with your brushes by just going across with the yellow, across with the orange then across with the red and then go with the orange just where the red and the orange goes over again and then going over with the yellow one where the yellow and the orange goes over so you literally use the lighter one to blend the orange and yellow together and the lighter one of the orange and red to blend together almost confused myself then which is not hard today. I'm just looking forward to having my uh, purple rain later. What is a purple rain, you ask? No, it's not rain that falls purple. It's a drinky. Can be quite a potent drinky, especially if Gavin's pouring them. <laughs> And you all know I'm telling the truth. So what's in a purple rain, Gavin? Vodka rum, blue caracal and grenadine. So if you didn't quite catch that, there was uh, vodka. We're using spiced rum in ours. Um, grenadine, blue caraca. And you can either use Sprite or Lemonade. And that's what we're going to be using, is Lemonade. So I've done the red, and then where the red and the orange meet, so I'm just going with the orange one again. And just blending that in a bit there. Okay, so that's my brickwork. And now I've finished with that. But I want to keep my red ink out. And then I need some smaller stamps and I've got a set here of, so these could be flower stamps, they can be texture stamps, so these are one of Phil Martin's life quotes, um, extra textures, extras textures is called, okay, and there's little music notes, little swirls, little lines, dots, stitch and stars so what I'm going to do now and you keep the stencil and everything in place I'm just going to blow off any bits that have come off the foam I'm going to use an acrylic block now um, I think I'll use that one can you get that one for me Okay, so it's just an acrylic block and I've got all sorts of different ones stamps here. So that's what they like. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with some lines. I'm going to pop them on there. And then instead of taking, because they're a smaller stamp, instead of taking the ink to the stamp, I'm actually going to dab the stamp to the ink. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm using the red ink and I'm actually going to use the red ink up on the, the yellow part. So this is just to add some texture now in between those brickworks. And I'm going to just sort of stamp around in 
numerous colours. So a bit in the centre. And it doesn't matter if it goes over two or three bricks. It's just to put some texture into those bricks. So I think you can all see that. So that's that one. So now I think that's enough of that. I think three is plenty. Again, I'm going to take my... So every time I finish with a stamp, I'm actually going to clean it. I'm actually going to clean it on my stamp cleaner. So rub it on the bottom bit, which I've wet with water, and then rub it on the top one to clean it. So that's all clean. And we'll put that back onto my set, my stamps. Then I'm going to take my stars. Now, so the stars is a slightly longer stamp, so it'll probably do, um, it'll probably do two or three bricks. So I don't mind that. And I'm going to go into a different colour this time. So I'm actually going to use my orange and because it's a small ink pad. I'm actually just going to tap it all the way over. There's a little bit in there from when I cleaned it yesterday. Yeah, yeah, better. So that's that. And I'm gonna put the stars around you, I think. Yeah. And I'm putting pressure on now with the stamp because I need it to go down beyond the stencil onto the card and then you end up with some stars like that. Some more stars, so I'm going in threes, I think. And then I'm gonna do a bit more later as well. So the orange will always look brighter on the yellow because the yellow is lighter. It'll sort of just blend in with the orange and then it'll sort of be a lot paler on the red. I finished with the orange now. I'm going to clean up my stamp on my stamp pad, stamp cleaning pad. And then I might use these. Ooh, I might use the swirls on this one. But what I want to do now, I want to add some real oomph into this picture. So what I'm now going to do, I'm going to take. Uh, some black. So I'm going to take some black into this one now. So I got my black ink. It's a small swirl, and because all this is quite subdued, just want to add in the odd brightness. Something really, really dark. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple of swirls coming off the end down there. Doesn't matter if it's in an area where you've already been. Do a little bit there, and then with the rest of that one there, I'm gonna put that. Oh, I keep doing that. I keep hitting my head on the thing because I gotta go forward to. Sorry. Don't get stamp sickness now. So as you can see, that stamp stayed black, and that's because of the type of ink I'm using. But that's okay. So I do say if there's ink on a stamp it it is quite nice because it'll coat it better I'm trying to keep out of the way oh I'm wobbling oh look I'm all wiggly wobbly and again I've got some swirls some little stitchy little things like that put some down here and I'll just put a couple up there I think this isn't something you know, aren't they? So I'm going to go in the middle there as well. There we are. So that's lovely. So I think that's enough for me. Okay. So now I have finished with that. And I'm just going to clean up any ink that's on and around my mat. And the one thing that will happen now when I remove that is 
you probably will have to use some sort of alcohol blending pen or some sort of alcohol removal stuff on my stencil because of the black ink I've used. Okay, because you can still see there's a little bit on there. And it will dry permanently on this, so it wouldn't affect the next thing I would do on it. But obviously I'm going to want to clean that off nicely later. So I shall do that with my alcohol clean solution. So that is now my... So my my assistant's very really good, you know. As soon as I finish doing things, he's there. So you can see it's on you as well. So I will have to use a little bit of bl blending solution or something to get that off. As I said, I haven't done the, the top bit there, so that's all I would do is actually take that in like that, take my yellow, and finish that brick up there, and there's my little brick up here as well. So now. Now that is done, so you can see now on on the background here, I had all sorts of different lines. It was all done in black, but I thought it would look nice with colours as well. So that's why I've gone in with orange stars, red lines, swirlies, you know, all sorts of different little things like that. So that's why I've done that. But now what I'm going to do then is you take your fine line pen again. And this can be a finer one, it can be a wider one, it, it doesn't matter. Again, it's down to choice on what you have in the house, really. Okay, and that's all you do with these, is you just follow the shape of the brick. You can wiggle around, so you can do a solid line, like that. Okay, or you can actually go... Do a stitch line. You can do stitch dot 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 cross dot 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 line cross cross dot 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 cross dot 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 line cross line. So you can just keep going and add in anything you want in there really so it's making up now your own sort of line really okay you can even go around you can wiggle that one because some of these won't be seen anyway and then you can double line it so you can just go in with extra wiggles wiggling over to the little uh, Okay, so you just do all these then. Cross, line, cross, line, cross, line, cross, line, cross. Okay, so don't be afraid. You know, just want to go straight. Just pick out some straight ones, some dotted ones, some lined ones. You know, and you can just mix and match them all up. And that's how you do the background on that one. And the other thing is, you've got some blank ones there that's got no patterns in at all. So let's take this one up here. If I take that one and put a line around it, you could then do... your own designs in it. So to say you can't. Okay, let's do that. You 
Mm. You can get this one here, look. So just take what you want to take from it, really. But use it as a, a nice sort of playing area, taking your, an hour out from your day. Just do a quick inky background. Do a line down that one. Then I'll do a little heart in the centre. Put a little tail on it, a little head on it, and a little beak. So you can even put little birds on a line and stuff like that. But the whole process of this craft along is to actually get you to to calm your mind down. Do a bit of doodling and continue on with all that sort of things. Right. And then you can put whatever topper you want on it, any stamp you want on it. You know, it's all down to you then in the end. Okay. Ooh, hello Jackie Littlewood. If it's for a teenager and you're artistic, you could graffiti it. You can, yeah, you could even take word in stamps, um, leave the stencil down and just, you know, put the graffiti, graffiti into it so it only goes onto the bricks. Um, yeah, you could do that. And you can even take the stencil off and just graffiti directly over the bricks as well. Yeah, and it would, this would go well with the new uh, fashionista. Uh, Trudy design, Trudy Howard design stamps that Phil has been doing on his lives today. Um, so yeah, so so basically that's that. This one was just um, a stencil again. I don't need to show you that. It's that stencil. that stencil there. I've just inked through there with three colours, yellow, light brown, medium brown. Did my black line along the bottom, left a little white border, went around with a, a brow marker or a black pen just to outline that so you're not using an extra piece of card. Um, and then I just went around just like I did with the, with the diamonds on the card. I actually went around the bottom end where the shadow should be to make it dark and then just filled in the stems with my pen and, and literally that's all that was and literally that was that stencil there which I think you can see is that there and that is actually on that stencil as well okay so I think to that so that is what we did today so we were showing how to use your stencils how to take your pen then an ink and how to do this barcode sort of effect which makes it look as if it's got shadows light and dark and how to use a partial stamp by masking off with a piece of sticky note once you've inked up your stamp and then the second one was actually showing how to do a background out of a full stencil and then just going over everything with a fine line pen around every brickwork, taking your stamps into those and doing your own designs as well within each brick. Um, and basically that's it. So, how has everybody got on with that? Are you all okay? Are you all going to have a little play now for this afternoon? And we are going to be in the shop again on Monday with the extra three weeks lockdown that they've announced. Um, we will be back in the shop again on Monday. If you want to place an order, please place an order and it will be picked on Monday. If you are coming to pick it up, um, then please put it for store pickup. 
when you place your order and then that way you won't get charged delivery um, and you should have a message as soon as it is picked as well so you will have an email to say that as well okay so i hope you enjoyed that for today and we shall keep you posted on anything else that's going on with us next week so enjoy your day hope you all keep well and safe and have a good one bye